actually going to take you through some of my experiences and some of my thoughts about climate change in Africa and in Tanzania and what we can do in Tanzania about climate change. But before we move on, what exactly is climate change? Now, climate change is the variance in the average weather pattern. Every couple of a thousand years, um, the planet Earth goes through these cycles of uh, climatic change, whether it's extreme heat or it's extreme cold. And so climate change is the variances in these weather patterns that could be caused by nature or human activity. Now in this particular discussion, I want to explore what human activity has to do with climate change in Tanzania. Now, uh, the greenhouse gas, the global warming effect that's caused by greenhouse gases, I'm sure a lot of you people have heard about. But it's basically how uh, emissions, such as carbon or chlorophyll carbon, carbon uh, increase the temperature of our Earth's atmosphere. And that then causes the greenhouse gas effect, which then uh, reduces or changes the way the weather pa patterns affect uh, our planet Earth. Now, in the late 80s, for the first time, we saw an international concerted effort to do something about climate change. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was formed, which is a coalition of civil society, researchers, and government that decided to look at climate change from the supranational level and see what they could do about it. Then later in the early 90s, we had the formation of the Kyoto Protocol and the Montreal Protocol. And those were the first key legal instruments that decided to formalize uh, climate change as an international crisis. So from there, we had the implementation of the Kyoto Protocol in 2005. And what happened with the Kyoto Protocol in 2005 was uh, countries decided to come together and form a system of mitigation and ad adaptation to climate change where countries either had to cap their emissions, so countries either had to decide to reduce their emissions or level out their emissions to a particular level, or to trade those emissions. Now it all sounds like mumbo jumbo, but it's really interesting because this is the first time that the international community decided to create a market for the environment, essentially. Now in 2005, when the Kyoto Protocol came into force, and later in 2007, with the Bali Agreement, the international community slowly decided that uh, countries in the West and countries in Africa had to do something together to work on climate change. And that formed a system that's known as reduced emissions from avoided degradation, avoided degradation and deforestation. I'll come back to that later. So after all that, what does climate change have to do with Africa and Tanzania? Well, Tanzania is a developing country, and about 60% of our GDP comes from the extraction of natural resources, be it mining, be it tourism, or agriculture. All these have to do with the way we use natural resources. Now, climate change will directly affect how natural resources are exploited in Tanzania. And thus, the need to regulate how climate change is affected. Now, some of the more practical examples I'd like to share with you on climate change in Tanzania and its effects include Mount Kilimanjaro, for example. Now, the ice cap in Mount Kilimanjaro has drastically reduced not necessarily because of climate change, but what is directly related to climate change is the closure of one of the routes in Marangu. And as we all know, uh, you know, we fame Mount Kilimanjaro as one of the premier tourist spots in Tanzania. But the simple closure of one of the routes that access Kilimanjaro because of uh, increasing frost has led to a reduction in the number of climbers who climb Mount Kilimanjaro to the Marangu route, and you know, that then relates to fewer number of porters who take people up the route, fewer number of tourists who go up the mountain, 
and less money that comes into Tanzania. Or let's look at the Serengeti, for example, and the village of Loliondo. Uh, in 2007, uh, villagers from Loliondo found out that the, because of the, redu the, the reduction in the amount of rainfall, they could no longer grow as many crops as they did. And so they began using uh, alternative means of agriculture, uh, which led to a reduction in growth output and less money for them. So although climate change uh, specifically deals with the way we extract natural resources and the way we use natural resources, it has a direct bearing on our economy, on the people who live in Tanzania, and how we decide to shape our lives in Africa. So what exactly can we do about climate change? In 2007, a group of friends and I decided to do something about climate change. We decided to get together and work on reducing carbon emissions, work on mitigation of uh, carbon emissions in Tanzania, and finding how we can link carbon emissions and climate change and the economy, because all these things I be we believe were interrelated. So we came together and decided to link tree planting, uh, rural communities, and the economy. And after that, we formed a company, and I'd like to share some of the few experiences. What did we learn? We first learned that we first need to get everyone on board, be it civil society, be it government, or be it big business. Because to use the cliche, climate change is a global problem, which requires a global solution. But we also learned that sometimes uh, markets are not necessarily the best ways to go. A very quick example is a rural community in Tiha district, which was engaging in mushroom farming. And when we approached this uh, community in Tiha, they faced one major problem, which was they could not find enough water to be able to grow their mushrooms. But water is directly related to the amount of trees they grow. So by finding ways to grow indigenous trees, we then managed to get enough water trapped in that particular area, which then meant the mushrooms that they grew grew faster and grew in larger amounts. So there are ways in which responsible business and social entrepreneurship can come together to mitigate climate change. Now to me, that sounds like socialism. Well, I would ask you, is that an uncommon Tan Tanzanian ideal where businesses and social good can come together. Tracking the footprint, what can you and I do about climate change? Well, green is sexy. Say it with me, green is sexy. Green is sexy. Green is sexy. Green is sexy. You don't need to go out and buy a prior. Uh, you don't necessarily need to grow trees in your backyard. But what you could do is do, make a conscious effort to do something about climate change. Be it carpooling, or be it riding your bike to work. Those are the individual efforts that both you and I can do to mitigate climate change. Now, although Tanzania's per, GD, per capita carbon emissions are much lower than those of the United Kingdom, China, or the United States of America, we can all find our individual ways to adapt to climate change. Try and mainstream climate change activities in your lifestyle. If you own a company, you can try offsetting your emissions, or if you run a business, you could try offering uh, carbon emissions to your customers as a value addition. Try and use fuel efficient ways to, in the way you manage your lifestyle, whether it's using fuel efficient light bulbs or non-renewable uh, re energy sources, uh, we could all do something about climate change. So my appeal to everyone today is to really look at our lifestyles and to look at what we do as individuals and realize that we all have our little small part to play within the larger framework of the world and that we can all do something about climate change in Tanzania. Thank you very much.